All right, so uh, welcome to Virtual Jeff. Uh, decided against Jeff in the box. There's really no reason to have my picture down there. Uh, so I guess we can call this Ghost Jeff. Uh, it's just going to be my voice over the PowerPoint slides. Um, big upside for me is that allows me to do this naked. Um, kidding. Um, sorry for the mental image. Anyhow, um, so we're going to talk about uh, specific crimes now for the next couple weeks. Um, obviously, next week's drug week. Before we can get to drug week, we're going to talk about uh, violence. And so what I want to get done is to talk about how we know what we know and then sort of what we know and what it means. Um, so in specific, we're going to kind of go through the part one uh, UCR crime. So the Uniform Crime Reports, the, the Violent Crime Index includes robbery, homicide, rape, and assault. Um, and so we're going to talk about, you know, how much there is and how we know that and, and how we compare to other, other folks. Um, main sources, the UCR I've already talked about. So uh, to remember, that's our, that's our police data. So it's all the crimes that are recorded by the police. So if it's in the UCR, uh, it had to have happened and had to be either detected by or reported to the police, and they had to record it. Um, our other big source of data in the U.S. is the NCBS, uh, and we can get three of the four crimes that are in the UCR data from the from the NCBS. And again, NCBS is we call up a random sample of Americans and say, have you been a victim of any of these crimes in the past six months to a year? So um, that includes uh, aggravated assault, which is in the UCR, robbery and uh, rape and sexual assault. So uh, we can get sort of a back check on uh, and cross check each other with three of the four crimes. Other crimes, um, other data sources we'll talk about include the school safety report and um, or at least some crimes we can get data on uh, self-report. So big picture, again, I've been sort of harping on this as long as we've had the course so far is that uh, violent crime has gone down. Um, so you'll notice even in, in, in the NCBS, even in the past year where we had some fluctuation and some debate and some a bit of hyperbole in the media, um, the NCBS says crime's gone um, down. Um, and, and so the startling point is not this sort of fluctuation here, not even this year-to-year -year thing here. It's if you look at what was going on in 93 and compare it to 2015, um, it's a pretty massive decline in crime. So... Um, so the NCBS is pretty clear that, that violence and serious violent crime has been declining uh, for decades now. The UCR data shows the same long-term trend. So this is back in 93 here. Um, you see this massive decline in uh, serious violent crime. So this index is rape, robbery, aggravated assault, and homicide. Um, you do see an uptick here. Um, this is what's generated this combined with politics and campaigning, has generated uh, sort of a, a lot of media interest. Um, and we'll talk a bit more about that. So there has been an uh, increase in um, violent crime as measured by the, the UCR. Although, again, like if you look at the chart, right, relative to um, the long-term trend, we're talking about this right here, right? So it, it's conceivable that it's a bit like this, where it could go back down and bounce around. It could be conceivably more like this, um, where, where it goes up. We just don't, we, we don't know. Um, it's too early to tell. Uh, so, disagreement. So, uh, NCBS, NCBS says violent crime went down last year. year UCR says it went up. Um, and that happens from time to time. That, that You'll see like one year or two year disagreements in the data set, but that the long term trend um, almost always ends up shaking out the same way. Um, so both sources show us property crime is down. Um, UCR says the, the violent crime index, so the four offenses uh, combined went up 3%, whereas the NCVS said it went down 12%. Uh, and, and, and the culprit for that difference seems largely to be aggravated assaults. So if you think about uh, an index that includes aggravated assault, rape, robbery, and homicide, uh, homicide isn't going to drive this index because it's so rare. So the, the big drivers are going to be things like aggravated assault and robbery. So it makes sense that, you know, if there's a disagreement between the NCBS and UCR on aggravated assaults, that you're going to see that in the data. So um, trying to figure that out, 
um, becomes tricky. So uh, if you look at the NCVS, one of the things they keep track of is it, if you were a victim of this crime, did you report it to the police? And so in their data, crimes, aggravated assaults reported to the police went down by a, a pretty good margin. Um, but in the UCR data, what they record went up by nearly 4%. So um, it's a bit speculative, but, but one of the things that may be responsible is that police are more likely to record assaults as aggravated assaults. Um, they had been kind of heavily criticized in the, in the 90s for doing the reverse, for sort of downplaying the severity of assaults. And so one of the ideas is that perhaps they sort of overcorrected, that, that they're now treating what used to be simple assaults as more likely to be recorded as aggravated assaults. So either way, um, you know, there, there's disagreement between these data sources, which which happens. They're, they're sort of measures from two very different places. Um, one of the one of the sort of most the most reliable measure in the UCR data, and one that can't be measured by NCVS because there's no victim, is homicide. Uh, and so uh, it's clear homicide did go up. It went up from about 4.4 per hundred thousand to 4.8 per hundred thousand, and that was an increase largely driven by. Um, pretty substantial increases in a pocket of big cities. And so, you know, in those big cities, homicide went up enough to drive up the national homicide rate. And so it didn't happen in all big cities. Uh, it didn't happen in cities generally, um, but that was enough to drive up the homicide rate. And so we're talking about the Chicago and Washington, D.C. and Baltimore um, that had uh, pretty big increases in homicides. Uh, and so, again, is this a trend? Uh, it's too early to, to figure that out. Um, here's here's the data, and again, I pointed this out that, that national data hides pretty significant differences in, in state level data. So uh, homicide per hundred thousand is uh, four point eight, four point nine. Nationally, it is uh, two point four in Minnesota. So uh, it's roughly half of, of what it is in the nation in general. Um, Rape, we talked about this earlier this semester. Um, Minnesota is above, but this is, again, keep in mind this is crimes reported to and recorded by police. And so given all the other data for homicide, robbery, and aggravated assault, it would be shocking if this reflected reality. More likely, it, it reflects the fact that Minnesotans uh, feel more comfortable reporting uh, rapes than in other places. Um, so... Across the board, with that one exception, um, it's safer in Minnesota than it is in, in other parts of the country. Oh. All right, so let's talk about homicide in, in more specifically. So um, again, uh, the definition of a homicide is, is the taking of a life by another human being. Uh, obviously, some, some homicides are legal. So um, you know, we talked about justifiable, hom justifiable homicides, you know, self-defense. Um, you know, or homicide in the course of military service. Um, obviously, those those are not defined as criminal. Um, criminal forms of homicide are split up in the first and second degree and voluntary and involuntary manslaughter. So, first degree murder is when you knowingly and intentionally kill somebody. So, if you think about uh, a husband that kills his wife for the insurance money, um, that planned it out ahead of time, got an insurance policy, it was pretty clear they knew what they're doing and they killed that person intentionally to collect the money. Um, so that's first degree uh, murder. Second degree murder would be that you intended to kill somebody, but didn't do it in a premeditated way. So first degree includes premeditation. Second degree would be, you know, the example of you get in a heated argument and you decide you're gonna kill somebody and you intend to kill them and you do so. Um, so, so again, the difference between first and second is the degree of premeditation. Um, planning out ahead of time is make makes somebody more culpable, and we treat that more seriously. Uh, when you get down to manslaughter, you're talking about somebody that uh, killed another person without intending to kill them. Uh, and so voluntary would be you meant to hurt them, but you didn't mean to kill them. So you get in a bar fight, and you, you beat somebody to a bloody pulp, and they fall in the concrete and die. Um, you didn't mean to kill them, but you did mean to to assault them, and that assault led to their death. Um, 
Involuntary manslaughter would be something like uh, uh, driving uh, driving drunk and, and killing somebody in an oncoming vehicle. So you didn't mean to even assault them, but um, when you drank and got in the car, you did something that a reasonable person knew could lead to the death of another person. So that would be an example of, of invo involuntary manslaughter. So um, that's, that's the legal... Uh, definition of homicide. Um, in the U.S., you know, we, we talked about this at the start of the semester. We, we've experienced uh, lots of peaks and valleys in the homicide rate. If you go back over further here, there was another peak that looked a lot like this in the, in the era of the uh, prohibition uh, in the 1930s uh, prior to the Great Depression. So we've had these peaks and valleys. Uh, 2014, you know, it was one of the safest years since the 1950s. Uh, 2015 went up to 4.8. But again, so, so part of the thing to keep in mind is that homicide did go up, but historically we're, we're still at pretty low levels for the United States. Um, and so it's one of the things I want to point out. There's a stat been thrown around by, uh, by President Trump, by our Attorney General, by, by sort of conservative, conservative pundits that uh, 2015 was the biggest one-year increase in homicide in 45 years. Um, and, and technically, that's true. Um, but the reason why that's true is if you look at the data, uh, crime's been going down largely for, for over 30 years. So to say that we had the, the, the one-year increase uh, is the biggest one in decades, it's because homicide's been, been dropping for decades. Um, and so that, that data references increases right here. Um, and it may turn out that we're going to experience something like that, but right now, reasonable people can agree we have no idea um, that it's gone up something like this to this, but, you know, it's, it's way too early to tell whether that's going to be a, a real trend or not. Um, so it's a great example of being sort of leery and skeptical about claims being made. And, and then the issue is that, that people get sloppy with their language and, and it turns in from the biggest one-year increase, which is technically true, to saying crime is higher, or homicide is higher now than it has been in 45 years, which is which is preposterous, right? Because you look and say there's no way a homicide can be higher now at 4.8, 4.9 than it has been in 45 years. We had these horrific peaks where it got over uh, 10 per 100,000. So... Um, Again, you know, when you when you hear stats that seem startling or, or way too high to be true, they usually are, and, and it's usually a, a sort of technicality like this. So, and, and the issue is this sort of year-to-year -year increase, right? So you're talking about this increase right here or this increase that's not on the chart right here. One year-to-year -year increase, uh, when you calculate the percent, can seem can seem high, um, but when you put it into context and say how does that level compare to the level um, to say there is a you know 20% increase, but homicide only really went up from 4.5 to 4.8 or 4.9 per hundred thousand. So that's kind of what's going on with homicide. Uh, what do we know about homicide in terms of, of how it plays out? Um, you know, as victims and perpetrators, uh, almost all homicides tend to be male. Um, 90% of homicides are perpetrated by males. 80% of victims are males. Um, almost all homicides happen within race. So white people kill white people. Uh, black people kill black people. Uh, and, and most homicides, 70% or more, are classified as non-stranger homicides. Um, we talked about this earlier. Uh, African Americans are disproportionately likely to, be, likely to be offenders for homicide, but also to be victims, which makes sense when you, when you think of the fact that you know, homicides are committed within race. Uh, by far, the most common circumstance for a homicide is an argument. Uh, so a bar fight that gets out of hand, uh, a fight within a household uh, between relatives or friends where people are drinking and, and using drugs and it gets out of control, uh, a dispute between people who know each other, a beef of some sort. Uh, so, so most homicides, almost 70%, uh, are caused by an argument and, and also are a result of firearms, uh, largely handguns. Uh, 
in terms of neighborhood, you know, we, we talked about this. Um, we talked about social disorganization theory. There's a very strong sort of neighborhood level relationship uh, regarding violence. And, and so in those neighborhoods where you see that concentrated disadvantage and, and where neighborhoods uh, show disorganization versus collective efficacy, you see these very high rates of, of serious violent crime. Um, so that's sort of one of the obvious patterns you see when you look at uh, violent crime. In terms of the United States versus other countries, uh, you know, we used to think our, our sort of common sense notion about crime, the, the common wisdom was that the U.S. W w was sort of violent, period, compared to other countries. We actually did, in, in the 90s, victimization surveys in, in Great Britain, uh, Canada, and Australia. And, and what we found is that if you take out homicide, the U.S. looks a lot like other countries in terms of our violence. That we're, we're sort of middle of the pack when you think about assault, aggravated assault, sexual assault, uh, robbery. Um, and, and our property crime is actually lower than many other countries. But where we really do stick out is our, our willingness to, to kill each other. Um, it's especially apparent for firearm deaths where we're five to ten times higher than other sort of comparable industrialized country. Uh, but even taking out firearms, we're, we're still two to three times more likely to kill each other without, without a gun. Um, and so it, it seems likely that it has something to do with firearms, but it's also obvious that it's, it's more than firearms. So there has to be more than one explanation. Um, Here's a, an example to give you kind of a magnitude of the differences. Uh, Canada is red here because I stole it from the Canadian government, stole this chart. Um, so here's how the United States sits relative to uh, other countries. This was 2012 data, which our homicide rate is very similar now to what it was in 2012. Um, so when people talk about comparing the U.S. to other industrialized countries, this is the sort of list of countries that we generally compare ourselves to. And so even after we've come down from, from a high of almost 10 per 100,000 down to closer to 5 per 100,000, um, what's striking in a chart like this is, is how far away we are from other countries. Um, Canada is below two. Most European countries are, are one or below. So when people talk about uh, American violence and American homicide, this is, this is what they're referring to. Uh, now, now, again, it depends on how you frame it. And so if, if you're, you look at some of the websites from the, the folks that are sort of against gun control, um, they, will, they will use all countries, right? And, and so when you use all countries, you, you compare the United States to uh, things, places like Rwanda and El, Sor El Salvador and Colombia, uh, we look much more moderate in terms of our homicide. Uh, and, and so, you know, here's the so-called industrial countries. Uh, here's the U.S., and, and our profile sort of fits more with Cuba and Kenya and Chile um, than it does with, with either European countries or um, countries with a great deal of political, uh, political disorder. Um, so that's where we stand in terms of homicide in the U.S., and, and so one of the issues is why, why do Americans kill each other more than uh, other comparable countries? Um, and the three, three theories that, that people usually put forward have to do with firearms, with economic inequality, and, and with, with our sort of cultural values in the U.S. Um, and it is true that, that the U.S. relative to other countries has pretty high handgun ownership. Um, and if you expand beyond handgun ownership, we have just high gun ownership. Um, and there is a sort of, you know, correlation, at least, between uh, handgun homicides and um, the percent ownership of, of handguns. And so, yeah, on the one hand, we do have a very high gun-related homicide tally, especially when you compare us to other, uh, other nations. But um, to sort of bring that in, into the realm of gun control debates in the U.S., um, one of the issues with the U.S. is there's no clear pattern because because states and cities differ with respect to their uh, gun control and how effective it is and, and how wide it is. Um, there really is no clear pattern um, between the level of gun control in the U.S. and, and homicides, homicide levels. Um, 
Why? Well, there's a variety of reasons. One is in the U.S., our, our sort of gun control tends to be less stringent than in other places. Um, but even if you have gun control in the U.S., there, there's, there's such a high volume of, of weapons available that there exist secondary gun markets, people selling guns to each other, um, gun shows, classified ads. Um, you, you can buy guns illegally on the streets. You can have people go legally buy you a gun and then sell it to you. Um, you can burgle people's houses and steal firearms. So uh, when you have a high density of firearms, um, it becomes more difficult to control those firearms. So I think the evidence is, is fairly clear that, that gun control hasn't really had an impact on homicide in the U.S. It's, it's, it may be more, I've seen some data with respect to suicide. So suicide is a lot more prevalent than homicide, and it makes sense that gun control would, would relate to suicide um, because, frankly, less guns around means that people who have those intentions don't have that easy access. Um, so that's kind of my take on wh where where the evidence is on, on gun control and, and homicide. Uh, in terms of the second theory about cultural values and, and history, it's true that, that the U.S. has a fairly violent, bloody uh, history. You know, if you think about how Canada sort of made its own way from the Great Britain versus the U.S., right, that Canada still has ties and, and they became independent through largely a, a peaceful process, whereas, you know, we declared war. Um, the institution of slavery, the civil war in the U.S., the, the treatment of, of Native Americans and the genocide in that arena, that we have had this very violent uh, cultural history. The issue with that is you, you can look at other countries that had very violent histories, Germany, Japan, that now have very, very low homicide rates. Um, so it's unclear that, that our history is, is that unique from, from other countries. Um, it's also true, we talked about this at a couple times in the semester, that, you know, Americans are exceptional for our homicide rate and, and for our levels of, of in economic inequality when you compare us to other industrialized countries. And so people have speculated that, that those two, it's not, it's not a sort of, it's not a mistake, it's not a surprise that those two things are related. And so the, the inclination is to link that inequality with homicide. Um, and so, you know, especially as you get down to the neighborhood level, it, it's pretty clear that very, very um, destabilized, um, economically poor neighborhoods have very high violent crime rates. The issue is that, that you know, why would that affect just homicide and not things like robbery or, or aggravated assault? That, that why is economic inequality uniquely related to homicide? Um, and, and it may be that there are reasons for that, but I'm not sure that the, uh, that we have the theories to explain them. Uh, so, so it's another puzzle that it, it's true that the U.S. sticks out in terms of our economic inequality, and we stick out because of homicide. Um, but connecting those two things through theory and, and better research really hasn't been done yet. Um, so that's one of the things that folks are still thinking about and, and working on. Um, all right, I'm going I'm to cut this here and, and sort of we can do this in, in segments because if I horribly screw up a video, uh, I don't want to have to start over.